My name is Dr. James Ebden. Um, I'm a lecturer and uh, a member of the Environment and Public Health Research Unit. Um, and I'm based within the School of Environment and Technology. The, the term that best um, defines the role that I have, my research role, would be that of an environmental microbiologist. What I mean by environmental microbiology is, is looking at um, microorganisms in water, uh, looking at the impacts that they have on, on water quality. If I were to describe uh, a single Eureka moment that I've had um, in my research career to date, it would be the discovery of a, um, a bacterium from the human gut which is able to indicate the, the presence of viruses uh, of human origin. And this, this has been picked up both nationally and internationally and uh, has also featured in the press and BBC and Times Higher. Uh, so, and interestingly, the technique doesn't seem to be restricted to southern England. It seems to work in other parts of the world, um, in uh, the US, um, also in Africa, importantly. So uh, this is where most of our research is focusing at present. When we talk about water quality um, and health issues in, in Europe, we're usually talking about uh, impacting on people's quality of life. Uh, when we look at areas, less developed countries such as sub-Saharan Africa, we're actually looking at people's impacting on people's lives. Uh, so we're talking about, I mean, parts of Africa, you, well, in the world you've got about 6,000 children dying every day from water-related diseases. Uh, if we can develop low-cost techniques that are able to identify those areas, uh, then people can start actually trying to improve those areas. So until we know where the sources of pollution are coming from, it's very difficult to target those, those uh, water sources. An area that uh, is of particular interest to me is the impact that wild birds uh, have on water quality. Now wild birds um, can spread antibiotic resistant bacteria and more important, more recently, uh, avian influenza, so bird flu. So what we're trying to do is develop a, an early warning system that will be able to show us uh, which, say, drinking water reservoirs which are most at risk from uh, wild bird populations and also uh, organisms such as H5N1, bird flu, uh, and salmonella. Uh, and also looking at foodstuffs, contamination of, of shellfish. Now, shellfish are interesting as they're what we would term bioaccumulators. And that is that they, they filter very large volumes of water and they concentrate whatever happens to be present in the water. So if you have high numbers of bacteria or viruses, then they can build up within these shellfish meats. So from a health point of view, uh, being able to sh show if shellfish harvesting areas are at risk from sewage, from human sewage, is very important. So uh, that's, that's the areas that we're focusing on at the present. Yeah, I can imagine that molecular DNA-based techniques will continue to grow in and become ever more common, but what they won't be able to do is to be used routinely in laboratories in large parts of the world, and the techniques that we're developing will hopefully be able to be used in the areas where water quality doesn't just impact on people's lives, but where it does actually uh, have a much more profound effect. Um, so another area we're also looking at is changing climate. Um, We've seen the last two summers, we've seen very high storm events where a month's rainfall has fallen in a few hours. So we get a, a very large peak in pollution levels. So with changing climate, climatic conditions, we're likely to see emerging new um, microorganisms uh, appearing. And that these are challenges that we need to look into.